Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having Greek yogurt, peanut butter, and uh, frozen blueberries. Let's talk about the overhead press. And this is something I, I really do need to clarify because uh, for quite a bit of time, I promoted the overhead press and really like to promote it as a primary exercise. And if the overhead press is something that interests you, by all means, carry on training it. If you really have a goal of having a big one rep max on the overhead press, by all means, continue training it. If you're going to compete in weightlifting or you're going to compete in strongman, training the overhead press some wouldn't be a bad idea. Outside of that, you know, when people say, is it necessary? Should you be doing it? Quite frankly, I don't care. For most people, it's not going to be a competitive lift. Uh, we don't have the same competitive strength standards we do for the squat bench and deadlift, for example. Those are the lifts that we have in the, the largest pure strength sport, meaning it only measures strength, no other attributes. Some of the other strength sports measure other attributes. Because of that, uh, I just don't care about it. And I don't think people should care about it unless they personally just think it's an awesome lift. And it can be an awesome lift. You guys saw me work up to 227 and a half on it. But here's the thing. Uh, not everyone's built for it. For some people, it bothers their shoulders over time. It can be a difficult lift to learn correctly. Uh, I see tons of, of people mess it up who undertake it. They can't even keep their wrist straight. They've got wrist cocked back. All this other stuff, right? They struggle to get the bar path down. Uh, they bring it too low down on their chest. You know, again, putting stress on their shoulders for no reason. So if you can learn it correctly, then, then by all means. And it's not hard to learn with a little basic instruction, but I've certainly had plenty of novice clients come to me who can't perform it even remotely correctly without coaching. They can't do it. Number two... You can build the overhead press without even training it. Uh, the perfect example, when I was coaching Doug, and he'll probably be back. I had him for a year. You guys watched him do a 200-pound overhead press. Keeping in mind, he weighed about 185, 186 when he did that. He pressed more than his body weight on a strict press. Now, people say, so, so why are you saying training the overhead press may not be that important? because we didn't train the overhead press. It was one of his max lifts. Before he had, he had switched over to a powerlifting gym, but he was at a gym with minimalist equipment. So when we used to have him max, we needed other movements. We needed other movements to max on. He, he didn't have specialty bars, he didn't have bands, he didn't have chains. So uh, I don't know, about every 12 weeks or so, we would max on the, on the overhead press. He didn't do it in between there. He didn't do triples. He didn't do tens. We didn't use it for hypertrophy because he had no trouble growing his shoulders and upper chest. He liked incline bench and he was good at it. So we used the incline. And he was good at close grip benching. So because of those two things, whenever we would test the overhead press, he would be strong at it. He built a 200 overhead press, not overhead pressing. Just walking in and just doing it. And here's the point I always make with people. Strong is strong. Everyone has this idea, well, you're only good at this, this lift or that and the ones that you train. That's not true. Not true at all. If you are strong, you'll be strong at anything. And that's why I don't buy this cop-out when people will have a person who's good at only one lift or two lifts and can't do anything else and they pretend they're strong. No, they're not strong. Someone who's strong can do a lift they do not train and hit big numbers. It can be a lift they have never done in their entire life and they'll hit big numbers. I know a really jacked, really strong guy who squats over 600 pounds who doesn't squat. He, he squats every few months for a couple weeks. 
he does a lot of deadlifting. He does a lot of back work. Guy can row like a beast. He loves deadlifting. He loves sumo deadlifts. Sumo 700 pounds. He does leg press for his legs. Some single leg work. He can squat over 600 pounds. Why? Because he's a big, strong, athletic guy. He's athletic, too. You don't have to squat to be strong at the squat, either. And that may sound crazy to people, but it's the reality. A big, strong person is a big, strong person. If you're strong, you'll have a decent overhead press, whether you do the overhead press or not. You're strong, you'll have a decent conventional deadlift, whether you conventional deadlift or not. It's not necessary to train it if you don't want to. Still be strong at it. Walk in and test it. Uh, as far as shoulder development, it's not even close to the best shoulder builder. It's great for front delts. It's mediocre for side delts. There is some splash over. And I do tell that to people. Look, if you do enough pushing and pulling volume, your side delts will get decently big. They're not going to be maximized, but they'll get a training response. And if you do a lot of pushing and pulling, you probably don't need to do as much side delt work to, to get them maximally big. But it's not the best movement. If, if I had to pick one or two exercises that will build your shoulder girdle up, you want to use big movements, snatch grip, high pull. I think that's king. You want to use smaller movements because, again, stimulus to fatigue that you do in a lot of other volume, simple lateral raises. Either one of those by itself will build more entire shoulder overall than the overhead press will. And that's, again, something I've been asked a few times recently. Um, you know, is the overhead press by itself enough to build big shoulders? Mm, it'll help noobs quite a bit. By itself, no, it's not going to do it. Because it doesn't work the entire shoulder completely. Is it necessary? No, it's not necessary either. There are other movements that if your goals are, are to have really big shoulders... Uh, it's just not necessary. It can be a fine addition if that's your goal, but it's completely optional. It's completely optional. Technically, people who do enough bench specialization are going to have massive front delts without doing any overhead press. They could come in and do upright rows, lateral raises, snatch grip high pulls, things like that, and still build a much bigger shoulder girdle. It's just not a necessary lift if you don't want to do it. It just doesn't matter. You can do it. It's a fun lift. It, I think it's, it can be an impressive lift to display a max on. It's by no means necessary. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.